Today, I want to talk about forming a Jesus routine. So some of you that know me a little better know that we have three kids. And uh, when our kids were babies, we found that it worked best if we got our kids onto a routine. Now, I know there's different philosophies on this. Some people believe that you should just let your babies eat and sleep and so on as they please. We actually found it worked much better if we got our kids on a routine. So we did that with our first two and, you know, it worked great. It saved our sanity and it was a wonderful experience. With our third one, we decided maybe this isn't so important after all. So we just sort of let him kind of decide his own routine for a while until we realized that it was either routine or sanity. We had to pick between the two. And so we got back onto a routine with him after about three months or so, and then our sanity was restored. So I'm a big believer in routine for young parents and babies. But it's also true in the spiritual realm. We need to be on a regular feeding routine for us to thrive spiritually. Um, The interesting thing is a lot of people take the approach that, well, when I'm spiritually hungry, I'll feel it and I'll be able to feed myself and, you know, I'll go to church or whatever and, you know, that'll work fine. But the truth is that spiritual feeding is a little bit like working out You don't miss it for a long time until you meet a crisis when you need that physical fitness and then you realize, oh my goodness, I am really out of shape. And it's the same thing spiritually. If you're not on a regular routine of feeding yourself spiritually, you very easily get out of shape and then you, and and you don't initially realize it until you meet a crisis in your life, and then all of a sudden, oh my goodness, I don't have the spiritual stamina to meet this situation like I would like to or need to. And uh, often then you're playing catch up and it can be very challenging in that moment. So I wanna talk about today how to shape a spiritual routine that will cause you to thrive as a person especially spiritually, in every situation in life. And I want to start in a book that we probably haven't looked at for a long time. It's in the Bible, but it's in the first part of the Bible called the Old Testament. The book is called Daniel. And I want to read Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. And there it says, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published... He went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. So this was a spiritual routine for Daniel that he would kneel down by his window three times a day and pray. Now, How many of you have heard of the story of Daniel and the lion's den? A few of you. Yeah, quite a few of you. So Daniel and the lion's den is a a very fascinating story that we often talk about in Sunday school. And basically what happened was Daniel was a Jewish boy who was taken captive and brought to uh, Babylon, which is modern day Iraq. And he was taken as a uh, prisoner of war. And because he was bright, they figure he was probably somewhere between 14 to 16 years old when he was taken. But he was seen as a very bright young man. He was actually taken into the king's palace to be trained as an advisor to the king. And so he was given a very high class education and, uh, you know, trained in all kinds of different, you know, 
skills and so on. And, um, and really what they tried to do was brainwash him so that he would leave behind all of his Judaistic background, his Jewish faith from his homeland. But that didn't work with Daniel and a, and a few of his closest friends. They clung to their Jewish background. And this is the routine that Daniel created in order to sustain his Jewish faith. He would pray three times a day. And it was kind of his way of, of feeding himself spiritually, if you will. Now, a whole bunch of different kings came and went, and he, he was advisors to those different kings. And then uh, when he was in his 80s, there was a situation that arose where uh, some of the other leaders that were his peers became very envious of him because the king showed him special favor and they wanted to try to get rid of him. And so they sat down to scheme together how they could get rid of them. And the only thing they could come up with is his Jewish faith. Somehow they would try to trip him up with his Jewish faith. So they went to the king without his knowledge. And they asked the king to make a new law that nobody could worship any god of any kind for 30 days, except the king himself. So he was to be the ultimate God for the whole nation. And the king, he was kind of a bit self-centered and egocentric. And so he fell for this scheme. And Daniel wasn't around, so he didn't hear about it and didn't give any advice on it. And so he made this new law. So then these leaders, they... They, they went and hid and spied on Daniel to see if he would follow this new law. But his spiritual routine was to pray to, to the Jewish God three times a day. And he was like, nah, I'm not going to break my routine. I'm going to continue to do my spiritual routine. And so he went home and he prayed. And that's what we learned here. So he learned, he learned about the decree that he couldn't pray. And what did he do? He went right back home and prayed, just like he always had. And the punishment for not following this law was execution. And their form of execution was that you got thrown into a den of hungry lions. And so they, uh, these leaders caught Daniel doing this and they ran to the king right away and said, oh, Daniel, you know, your advisor, he broke the law. And the king was like, oh, my goodness, what have I done? And they said, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, but you made the law. You can't change it now. So reluctantly, the king had Daniel, what was supposed to be uh, executed. They threw him into this den of hungry lions. Well, then God stepped in miraculously. And, in, and it, the Bible says he closed the, the, uh, the mouths of the lions. Now, I'll, I'll have to be honest with you. When I was a kid, I, I saw Daniel as a young man in the lion's den, you know, maybe in his 30s or something like that. But he was actually in his 80s when this happened. So I would have been concerned about breaking a bone when he was thrown into the pit, you know. But uh, that was the least of his, of his concerns, obviously. And here he was in this den of lions, and the lions ignored him. Even though they were hungry, they just ignored him. And so, I don't know, maybe they cuddled up with Daniel for the night or whatever. But the next morning, the king, just out of desperation, I mean, it was a, a, a harebrained idea. He went to the lion's den and, and yelled down the hole into the pit, Daniel, did God save you? And Daniel yelled back, yes, he sent his angels and they closed the, the lion's mouths and I'm fine. 
And so Daniel proved God's faithfulness as he followed this spiritual routine that he had developed. Now, many different religions have different routines, spiritual routines that they require you to follow. Uh, probably the one we're most familiar with is the Muslims are required to pray. Is it five times a day, I think? They are to kneel and pray towards Mecca. And um, I, I've seen even Muslims here in the parking lot in, in uh, Tim Hortons you know, they'll get their mat out and they'll figure out where East is and then kneel and pray. And, and that's very strict. They have to do this at certain times um, throughout the day. Well, as followers of Jesus, we don't have specific routines we have to follow. Jesus has given us the freedom to shape our own spiritual routines now, some people have misunderstood that freedom as the freedom to not have any spiritual routines, but that's not the case. The, the Bible is very clear that Jesus wants us to have spiritual routines, but we're free to shape them in a way that works for us to feed ourselves spiritually so that we can thrive. And that's what I want to talk about this morning is some of the options available to us as Jesus followers for shaping our own personal spiritual routine so that we can truly thrive spiritually. And basically, it's, it's so that you won't starve to death spiritually, bottom line. And Jesus doesn't want you to starve to death spiritually, obviously. So I want to go to one other example of a spiritual routine. And this is in the New Testament, in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Now, both of these books that we've looked at, the book of Daniel, as well as now the book of Acts, are, are history books. There's di different kinds of books within the Bible. Some of them are prophetic. Some of them are history. Some of them are teaching books. And so on. And it's important to understand what kind of a book you are reading when you read a particular part of the Bible. So this is history. And so the reason we have history books in the Bible is so that we can learn from other people's example. And the key thing you have to remember when you read history books in the Bible is that it needs to, the lessons you draw from it need to align with the teaching of Jesus. Like you can sometimes draw conclusions from history that are wrong. And we need to be careful so we don't do that from the history books in the Bible. And the way we know that we are not drawing wrong conclusions from those examples is aligning it with the teachings of Jesus. So, Acts chapter 2 and verse 46. And there we see this routine. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So we see here, these are brand new followers of Jesus. And their routine was to meet together at the temple every day. And... And then they also met in their homes on a fairly regular basis. And when they met in their homes, they would eat together as well. And they studied the scriptures together. They learned together. They prayed together. They sang together. And uh, they thrived as they did that. And so they, they had this routine to feed themselves spiritually. How many of you have a routine for physical food in your life? So you eat on a routine basis. Okay, some of you, not others of you. So there's different philosophies about eating. You know, there's intermittent fasting and there's people that say, well, I just eat when I'm hungry. I'm a very routine-oriented person, so every morning I eat my oatmeal with yogurt on top, 
And then for lunch, I usually have an orange and a granola bar. And then for supper, I'll have some kind of meat and usually rice. I love rice, but sometimes potatoes, so on. So I, you know, I'm, I follow a very routine-oriented uh, eating schedule. But a, a few years ago, I took a course in uh, nutrition, and that was after taking that course that I started eating uh, oatmeal for breakfast because uh, the professor was a real uh, believer in the benefits of oatmeal. And so Shelley used to kind of say, how on earth can you eat the same thing every morning? Like that just, I just don't understand that. But I just feel good when I do that. And, and believe it or not, breakfast is a very important meal. Now, I'm not going to start doing a lecture on nutrition here, but the truth is we do need to eat. You're, and, but it is easier actually to cheat when it comes to physical food because physically your body will tell you if you're not eating enough. It'll give you some loud signals that, Dallas, it's time for some food now because you're, you're not giving me enough nutrition. But spiritually, it's a little more difficult, like I said earlier. And, but I believe that's why it's even more important to have a routine to follow spiritually. So here are some things that you can experiment with to see what works best for you to feed yourself spiritually on a regular basis. So... One of the things that I have done for, since I was a teenager is journaling. And I don't just write down for the sake of writing down. I actually address my journal to God. So I'm writing down my thoughts about my life to God, saying, God, you know, this is how I'm feeling about what's going on here. And this is what happened yesterday. And this is how it made me feel and it helps me process my own emotions in the process of praying about what's going on in my life to God. Praying as I write. And, and then a few years later, I added another element to my journal called a gratitude journal. So I write three things every day that I'm grateful for. And it's three different things than the day before. So I can't just sort of get into a you know, habit of being thankful for this, that, or the other thing and doing it over and over again. So it causes me to pause and think about what, what's the thing, three things that I'm especially thankful for uh, today. So like on Friday morning in my journal, I uh, wrote that I'm very thankful to have a beating heart. I don't know if you've ever said thank you for a beating heart, but uh, after my heartburn experience on Thursday, I was very thankful for a beating heart. And, and then two other things that I can't remember right now that I wrote in there, and I do that every day. So that's, that's something that it's an, a form of feeding yourself spiritually. Um, Another thing that I don't do now, but did when I was younger, is sing my prayers to God every day. When I first started pastoring in Sweden, I lived out in the country, and I used to go for long walks, and I would sing my prayers to God while I was walking in the forest. And it was a wonderful way to feed my spirit. Um, one thing that... I have never tried, I'll be honest with you, and it, it, I don't think it would work for me, uh, mostly because I sort of have two left feet, but I know a couple of people who dance before God every day. And for them, that is a wonderful way of feeding their soul. Um, one of the ladies that I know that does that is actually a, a ballerina, she teaches ballet, and she, I mean, to watch her worship as she moves is absolutely amazing. But it's not something she just does as a performance before people. She does it at home, by herself, in her own uh, family room, 
And it's a beautiful way for her to express uh, her love to God and to communicate with God. So if you're a kinetic kind of person, that might be something you want to try. Praying every day, I think, is important. Now, you know, traditionally we think of prayer as maybe something that we do before bed. Uh, and I think that's a great thing to do. I like to pray in the morning. Um, actually, I like to pray at several points during the day and stop and specifically pray. One of the exercises that I do in the morning is I have a prayer list. So I have listed in there uh, different people that I want to pray for, specific things that I want to pray for those people. Many of you are on my prayer list. And I actually have a, prayer, a different prayer list for every day of the week. So every, uh, I, I pray for the same list once every seven days. So on Sunday mornings, for example, I pray for our staff team here at the church. So this morning I prayed for Pastor Johan and Pastor Emma and Helen and Dale and some of those people that are, are part of that um, on Saturday mornings, I pray for my kids and so on and so forth. So there's different, different days that I pray for specific things. And then when I'm talking to those people, I, I make notes about things that are going on in their lives. And I write that into my prayer list so that I cover those things off. And, uh, and I find that really works well for me. Um, Another thing that I do in the mornings and at noon is something called listening prayer. And listening prayer is an amazing exercise that has actually, for me, probably become the most life-giving exercise I do as far as spiritual routine is concerned. And really, it's very simple. All I do is I get very quiet. I usually have a little bit of uh, worship music in the background, not enough that it, it grabs my attention, just enough to create a little bit of atmosphere. And then I just kind of pour out my heart to God and say, you know, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. Show me how you see this. And then I just get really quiet. And I allow God to just kind of show me how he's seeing it. And I'm always checking to make sure that it it aligns with the Bible so that it's not just my own imagination thinking up ideas. But it's amazing to me how God plants ideas in my heart and mind as I'm just quiet before him and allow him to do that. It's sort of countercultural because we like to have lots of noise in our lives, in our culture. We like to have lots of information coming at us. But listening prayer is when you sort of say, no, I want to shut all of that out and I'm just going to focus in on God's voice. Sort of like uh, tuning your radio to God's radio station. Instead of the news or sports or whatever, you're just tuning in to what he has to say. Another thing that can be very uh, powerful is meditation. Now, meditation is not... The kind of meditation I'm talking about is not where you're emptying your mind like we traditionally learn about meditation. It's actually when you're filling your mind with the Word of God. And I like to do that in the mornings as well. I actually have a long list of scriptures that I meditate on. And I choose a different one every day. And I just take a few minutes to focus in on that scripture. And you know how they tell you to use a mantra when you're meditating? Well, instead of a mantra, I use the scripture. So I'll just repeat that scripture slowly over and over again in my mind. Uh, sometimes just one word at a time. Sometimes one phrase at a time. Sometimes one sentence at a time. To, until it begins to really jump out at me and speak to me. It's another a wet, really powerful way of feeding yourself spiritual food. Now, another, another way of feeding yourself is reading your Bible. And 
reading your Bible can really be a very powerful way of hearing God speak to you. And if you're new at Bible reading, I encourage you to read the second half or the second one third uh, of the Bible, <clears throat> the New Testament part. It's a good place to sort of learn about Jesus. The first two thirds of the Bible is more focused on the, the nation of Israel. <clears throat> so it, it takes a little more knowledge of, of theology to kind of understand what the message of that is. But if you focus on the New Testament, that's really focused on Jesus and much easier to understand. And <clears throat> we actually have a Bible reading program here as a church that will walk you through uh, a certain amount of scripture every day. And if you follow that for a whole year, you'll have read the whole New Testament in one year. It's a, it's a very simple way to do that. And, and Pastor Jan will explain that at the end, how you can access that. And another thing that if this would help you, I follow that same Bible reading plan that we have for us as a church and I write my notes that of what, how, what I felt God was speaking to me through that particular passage of scripture every day. And if it would be helpful for you to just kind of see what I'm experiencing as I do it, uh, Pastor Yohan has an email list that you can put your email address on there and then we'll send that to you every day four days a week for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it just is sort of like training wheels for you, if you will, to help you kind of see how I, I process that scripture reading. <clears throat> and it help you kind of get into the same mindset of reading that. Now, another thing you can do that a lot of people really love is if you read the Bible on your phone, there's a phone app called YouVersion. And YouVersion has this uh, thing on there where you can invite your friends to read together with you. And I know some of you are doing this already, and it's a great thing. Um, so you, you can, they'll give you the option of a different, you know, choose a different Bible reading plan. And then you can invite your friends to journey with you. And so you can compare notes and keep each other accountable if you forget, they'll remind you and vice versa. And so that's another option for getting into a good Jesus routine. Another thing is listening to Christian music. You know, maybe you're not used to doing that, but, uh, you know, that's very simple. You can just tune your, your radio on the vehicle to a Christian radio station or, you know, create a Christian music playlist and put that in your earbuds. Um, Listening to good podcasts is another thing. Now, I'm not really a big podcast kind of person. I'll listen to them when people recommend specific ones. But I know Pastor Johan, he listens to several podcasts on a regular basis. And, and so if you're interested in, you know, that kind of thing, talk to Pastor Johan. He'll be able to recommend some good podcasts to follow on as a routine for spiritually feeding yourself. Um, another thing is reading good books. That has been very impactful for me. Uh, there's been a number of books over the years that have been life-changing for me spiritually. And uh, so if you are a reader, that can be another way to feed yourself spiritually. Another thing that uh, you can do is watch uh, good sermons online you know, either on YouTube or, or uh, there's other platforms as well. And uh, there's a number of really good preachers that you can listen to. Um, if I were to try to narrow it down to my top two, I would probably recommend Andy Stanley and Rick Warren are two really good uh, speakers that I watch on a fairly regular basis online. So, these are all things that you can do on a regular basis to feed yourself spiritually. And I would encourage you to do it as often as you can. Now, the other thing I would say is getting into a routine of any kind. 
like, I mean, Ryan would tell you this with exercise. You need to kind of make a special effort initially to get over the hump to be, make it into kind of a habit. And so one of the things that I have found that helps a lot is putting reminders in my phone. Uh, and I'm, I'm not shy about that. I have all kinds of spiritual reminders in my phone reminding me, okay, now you need to do this. Now you need to do that. And it helps me to form a good habit of doing these things that are healthy for me. And I found that, you know, morning, noon, and night is a good, in, are good intervals for me to be doing spiritual exercises or spiritual things to help feed me. Now, the other thing, I'll just say this from a practical standpoint. If you're new to this idea of building a Jesus routine, I would recommend to start small. You're better off to start with just one thing and get that habit solid in your life and then start adding to that little bits at a time than to start with the ambitious plan and then completely fall apart. Um, I've, I've built mine and reshaped mine over the years many times. And that's one of the other things I would recommend is reevaluate often. Like there, there might be things that you try and then realize, ah, oh, this isn't really working that great for me. Well, then reevaluate and try something else. And sometimes something will work for a while, but then you get into a new phase of life, maybe a different job routine, or, you know, you have a baby, or, you know, your kids move out, or whatever, and your, your circumstances change, and then you might need to adjust your spiritual routine to accommodate that new stage of life that you're now in. So experiment with lots of different approaches. I've, I've changed my Jesus routine many times over the years just to make sure that I was doing the thing that was the most effective for me at that particular stage of my life. And compare notes with other people. You know, ask them what they do. Small groups are really good for this, you know, just have a good talk with the people in your small group and say, hey, what do you do to feed yourself spiritually? What works for you, you know, and you get other ideas. I've only shared some ideas with you this morning. There's lots of different ones that you can try that work for different people. Well, let me just share one last one that maybe is a little bit out of the box, but I think it is an amazing spiritual routine as well. And I know of people that this is really the cat's meow for them. Like this one really uh, turns their crank and feeds them spiritually. And it's giving money away. What? Yeah. It's actually a spiritual exercise for first some people, this is really amazing. And it, it's a spiritual experience for them to be able to give to bless other people. And if you're going to do that, I would encourage you, you know, maybe choose a charity that you really believe in and give to them and just, you know, let the blessing of the, the joy of being able to make a difference in that way seek, soak into your soul. But here's one warning I'd give you. Make sure when you choose a charity that you choose one that's, that's got a, is reliable. Because there's lots of charities out there, especially now around Christmas time, who, you know, they, well, not an awful lot of the money that you give actually ends up with where, where they said they, it, would, it, it would end up. I remember a few years ago, the government of Canada made a requirement that charities in Canada had to give at least 1% of their, what they took in to the cause that they were advertising it for. And there was a lot of charities in Canada that had to close down. So you need to make sure you are actually seeing their, their financial records. Now, if you want to, you can give to us as a church. We are a registered charity here in Canada. 
And we have financial, our finances are wide open, so you can see exactly where all the money goes. And, uh, you know, that's another way that you can do this. But another way that you can do this, and I've seen this be really powerful, is by giving to just random individuals. Sort of like pay it forward type idea. It can be a very spiritual, a spiritually edifying uh, experience. And really, when you think about it, this is kind of the essence of the gospel. Like God gave Jesus to us. He's a giving God. He gave us mercy. He gave us grace. He gave us love and forgiveness. And so for us to turn around and be a giving people just makes total sense. It's just like imitating God. And, and so this is another spiritual way that you can form a Jesus routine that can be kind of fun, actually. And so whatever way you choose, just remember that, you know, you do your best. Love compels us to do our best and then God does the rest. It's not like this is a performance thing where you have to achieve a certain level. You just do your best and God will work with you in that. And that is important no matter where you're at with your spiritual routine. So let me just give you an example as I close here of one, one person that I met that for them, giving was the, the big thing in their life. And they just love to bless people. And so they made it their spiritual routine, their Jesus routine, to give away $100 a week. That was sort of what they set as a goal for themselves. But instead of giving away $100 in one chunk, they actually took out $25 bills. And then they walked around with this sense of listening to the spirit of God saying, show me or prompt me when you want me to give that away and to whom. So they were always sort of tuned in to hear the promptings of Jesus. And so they would just walk around and all of a sudden they did that person right there. And they'd walk up and say, here, I just want to give this to you. Just want to bless you. And it, it resulted in all kinds of great conversations. People were like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, I just felt like God told me to give this to you. And it would just, it just spread joy wherever they went. Where it got really interesting is after they got into this routine, God started prompting them to actually give to some people that were being rude to them. And you can just imagine how that would affect people. You know, somebody cuts you off in traffic and you roll down your window and say, hey, here's five bucks. God bless you. Or somebody in the grocery lineup is snarky with you and you just, hey, here's five bucks. God bless you. You can imagine how mind-blowing it would be for people. But it just fed his, their soul. They just felt like it was... A, a wonderful sense of Jesus feeding them as they did that. And it continued to open up doors for conversations and all kinds of stuff. Actually, I did, tried this myself a few weeks ago. Somebody was being really mean to me. And as I was praying, I felt like God said, just bless them. And so I sent them an e-transfer, a bunch of money. And I, I got this text back and they says, what's this for? And I said, just because. And it, it, it just stunned them. And it was amazing what it did for my soul. I just felt like this sense of, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, I don't know what I would do if I had lots of money. I might, I might just live for giving money away. I don't know. But it was the truth is it doesn't come easy for me to give money away. So it was a bit of a stretch, but it was amazing what it did for me. So my question for all of us as we wrap up here today is, what does your Jesus routine 
look like? What is it that you do to feed yourself spiritually? Now, maybe you're, maybe you're listening to me today and you're going, well, I don't even know if I know Jesus, let alone have a Jesus routine. Well, if you don't know Jesus, I think you should really get to know him. I think you should invite him into your life and see what happens. I can almost guarantee it will be amazing for you to experience Jesus' transformation in your life. If you really go all in, he will do amazing things. So I'm going to pray in a second. And if you'd like to invite him in, why don't you pray with me? Now, If you are already a follower of Jesus, why don't you try one of these things that I've suggested today or or talk to a friend and see what they do and see about that. But what maybe something they do would work for you too. And then I'd like to suggest one more concrete thing. I'd like to ask every one of you to get your phone out right now. Remember a few months ago, I think it was the beginning of October, we had a a Facebook post that we shared as a church. It was inviting people to come as they are. And I remember saying, you know, if all of us did this, we could probably reach half of White Court. Do you want to know how many people we've reached so far with that one post? Last time I checked, which was two days ago, we'd reached 2,310 people with that one post. So I asked Emma to make another post this week, which is pinned to the top of our Facebook page, wishing people the love of Jesus in their hearts as they prepare for Christmas. So if you go to our White Court Family Worship Center's Facebook page and go and scroll down, you'll see a post uh, wishing people the love of Jesus in their hearts. And I'd like to invite all of us to share that again. And just bless our community, the people that are on our friend list. I've shared it already, and I'd like to see how many people we can reach with just that simple greeting of the love of Jesus as we all do this together. So go ahead and do that right now, and then I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you give us the freedom to form our own routines for spiritually feeding ourselves. And we want to thrive spiritually. We don't want to be starving ourselves. We don't want to be out of shape. We don't want to be in a situation where crisis hits and we all of a sudden are totally in over our heads. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would guide us as we develop a a spiritual routine so that we can be healthy and strong. And for for those that are listening to me today and, and they've never met you even, I pray, Jesus, that you would come into their hearts right now. I pray that you would become their friend. And that you would guide them and shape their lives just like you've done for me. And that they would experience the love, the joy, the power, the grace of being transformed by you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.